you have no idea what you're up against. You can assume there's some major research institutions. You can assume there's going to be some major commercial operations. And this is a group of high school kids. That's more like a movie, right? My name is Micah Kim, I am 15. I'm Kavya Kare, I'm 14. I'm 14 years old. I am 16 years old. I'm a sophomore. I'm a sophomore at Valley Christian High School. I am not the youngest on the team. I'm the youngest on the team. Well, we're both 13, but he's six days younger than me. I'm Ansel Austin, I'm 15 years old, and I'm a mechanical engineer. When we chose our XPRIZE kids, we actually chose kids that are in the athletics who are in the arts, who are in the video media team. But it's kids from all different aspects that may not have been exposed to STEM or science-related environments, but had the same level of drive and capacity. It's not lack of ability, but the lack of opportunity that keeps kids back. Shell Ocean Discovery X Prize is a $7 million competition, and the main goal is to encourage exploration in our oceans. What inspired me was basically the unknown and vastness of the ocean. So we haven't explored a lot of it, and being a part of a team that can do some of that is what I wanted to do. We actually know more, more about space than our uh, undersea oceans. Only about 5% of the oceans mm -hmm. in our world has been discovered, and 95% is still undiscovered. X Prize meant to change that. By harnessing the power of autonomous underwater robotics, teams will illuminate the deep with high resolution mapping and advanced imaging systems on a scale never seen before. When we actually did our first presentation to the X Prize judges, one of the things I was able to present was some original ideas that came from the kids. They were very surprised. The X Prize is far beyond anything you could expect of high school students. However, the potential is far beyond anything we could imagine as well. We were going through the other team sites and I read something uh, interesting about one of the teams. They actually have a profile that says they have combined together 120 years of ocean engineering experience. We actually added up the ages of all of the original student team members and it came out to 122 years of life. We were actually the only team ever in X Prize history composed of junior hires and high schoolers that made it past that round After one. That can go up to full ocean depth. The fact that we're young and we're, we don't have as much experience as our competitors means that we don't have any really any limit upon us. This sonar takes in, um, takes in the raw data and, and, and automatically processes it to so we can use this processed bathymetric data to go and create a 2D map. We've had crazy ideas that we later on found out that could not work. Our original idea was a tow fish where we'd actually have a boat and a sonar device towed by a cable. That solved a lot of our problems. We did the math calculations and found out that you'd have to have a cable about this thick and it would weigh several tons. <laughs> because we went down that track, we were able to then come up with the idea of a pairing of a mothership that launched an AUV so that we could get to the launch area without expending the AUV's batteries. So those crazy ideas were what got us to kind of the design that we have currently today. We were able to seek out and find an AUV, literally one-tenth the size of the current technology that exists. An AUV stands for Autonomous Underwater Vehicle. That's what we're going to be using to scan the area that we need to under the ocean. <laughs> it could be a safety boot. Very light. You just accidentally dropped it. Next, Rise was saying you got to make sure your AUV fits inside of a 40 foot shipping container, um, which was like one of those like big crates. And we we're like, we, we can carry this thing on an airplane in a backpack. I told them that we have no way of winning this thing. <laughs> I know that actually made them happy. Uh, and I said, the chance of us even getting past the, the first round is astronomically small. 
And uh, their eyes wide open, uh, they're like, yeah, let's go for it. I think we're the underdogs, and that there's definitely something in being the underdog. Um, the expectations are low. We're gonna get set up here, and hopefully we'll be able to get a successful launch today, guys. First test we're gonna do is see if it floats, okay? Before we do any commands. Floating for the first time. Hey! All right, I'm running the motor at 10. Woo! Hey! Woo! Woo! We don't know whether the AUV is going to work in seawater. We don't. We don't know how it's going to work. We haven't programmed it autonomously so far. So these are all things that we have to take into consideration this next week. So. Schedules have changed, so no. I haven't booked the boat yet, mainly because we don't have a working AUV at this point. I mean, it's the, the, the test launch is tomorrow, and it doesn't work What's at not all. working? Why is the AUV not working? It, it was working a couple days ago, and, and we were trying to test it today, and, and now now the communication is going through. We can't turn on the motors, we can't move the fins, we can't do anything. Is it really worth, you know, spend over $2,000 and risk losing our, our one AUV. You know what, sometimes you have, to, uh, you have to bite the bullet and take the risks. I don't think we can move forward without, uh, without this test. And uh, we'll just have to hope that we'll get it working before then. All right, I'll do it. Thanks. Well, we had a meeting about booking a boat and our equipment. And right now, uh, I'm a little frustrated because our equipment's not working. So, um, but yet, uh, I'm, I'm supposed to book over $2,000 worth of of boat, uh, drone, and and diver to uh, to do a test tomorrow, when when literally we have nothing working, and right now our AUV actually sinks. Uh, the buck stops with me. Uh, if uh, everything goes wrong and uh, and we sink the AUV, and we uh, have an embarrassing uh, outing, that's all on me. That's our big ocean test today. We gotta make sure everything's up. Here. That's the only way to turn on the AUV. Uh, there's another magnet inside, which when it's attracted to this one, it starts the AUV. Why don't you just like go all around? I am going all around. So Does it make a beep quickly. when it turns on? Yes. And it starts making lots of noise. <laughs> nice. Yes. Okay. Mission accomplished. All right, guys. We're ready. Let's go. Let's hit the road. We're heading to the Monterey Bay Aquarium launch to see our AUV running. Oh, he's playing his video games right now. He's being really distracted. Yeah, copyright. <laughs> uh, watch him not even In Monterey, this is going to be the first time we're putting the fish in the open ocean. If we can successfully make a path plan, say go here, 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 download it to the AUV, and get it to run that path according to its intention, then we will be in very good shape. My goal at this point, I'm gonna set a low bar, is to come back with all the kids we came out with. I think we'll be good if we do that. It's my first time going on the boat. I'm pretty excited. I'm not really sure how it's gonna go. Hopefully I don't become seasick. I'm a coder. Imagine writing a program that you've never run before and expecting it to run 100% bug free. That's about where we are right now. How long is it supposed to go? It's gonna turn, right? It sh yeah, it should turn. As of now, it should make another turn and then head back yeah. at least. Hey, I see it. Is it, is it, is it, is it diving? <laughs> oh, we're actually testing our AUV, and our, yeah, our AUV actually got some depth, and it went under the water. Oh, no. It's, all right. it's, it's, it's all right. underneath it's us. right here. Is it coming back up? Please tell me it's coming back up. 
<laughs> I love it. It is gone. Okay, we're done. <laughs> I feel pretty excited. It's nice to know that it worked. We actually got the AUV out in the ocean. I think that's really amazing. It's, it's a really big step, and we actually got moose working. We ran it for 60 seconds, and while well, that might not be comparable to the six hours that we're going to have to run it underwater, it's a really good sign of what's to come. Oh, I love it. Those are the images we want to capture, but it needs this needs a timestamp and a location. Holy moly. That's a guy, Mr. Smith. This is underwater. Oh it's wow, it's a really good video. It's so cool. That was really cool. So here's my crazy idea for the day. You guys can laugh if you, uh, if you think it's crazy. But my thought is, we look at writing a program where our AUV goes for six hours in our pool. We can have it run all day, and we can actually see it and watch it and observe it. And that would give us this requirement before we get to Fort Lauderdale. And that guarantees the most difficult part of this whole thing. You guys either are all shocked or you think I'm absolutely crazy. You're yeah, absolutely crazy. OK, thank you. Crazy is good, because guess what? This is how this project got started. We were absolutely crazy when we tried to do this. What I'd like to do is see if we can actually program it today for a pool launch tomorrow. Mr. Kim, should I go in uh, the pool? Just hold on and then I'll let you know, okay? Stand by. He wants to go in the water so badly. <laughs> right now, we're going to have a, a six hour AUV pool launch so that our AV is completely ready for our ocean desk in Florida. I haven't worn this in like eight just years. Don't show anyone. Here you go. <laughs> That's a bit. All right, we're ready when you guys are. Okay, they're ready. Can you try lifting it up a little bit? The tail. Wait, no, we're not connected yet. He has to hold position. Okay, hold, hold it up there. We're logging right now. All right, three, two, one. There's a configuration warning with the program. When does it reset? It resets when you turn on, right? There's an error in the code because we haven't run it before and we're trying to figure out what it is. Yeah, pick it up. We don't know what's going wrong. That's the whole reason why we're trying to figure it out. All right, I'm ready to tr test it. All right. Clear. Oh, something moved. The fin moved. Uh, Mr. Kim, do we get an excused absence for second period? I have, a, <laughs> for second period. I have an English test. I have a calc quiz. Three, two, one. Hey, hey, okay, so something works. Running in three, two, one. It's going well, it's going, it's doing really well. Made the turn, smooth turn. Continuing to loop around. Shoot, it's gonna crash. What was that, 20 there, 5, 25? Yeah. That was a straight nose dive. After we launched it, it took a straight nose dive down to the bottom of the pool and it actually made contact and, I mean, at least at least took a little, a little bit of the pan off and that's just three printed nylon. 270, 360. That's zero. So that's, no. that's zero and that's 90. No. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, look, look at the thing, zero, straight oh, that way. Oh, that's zero. Yeah, north, south, West, east. But the sun rises. Yeah, just, 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 just look at the thing. Yeah, I'm a little bit frustrated because we've had access to the software for months, and when we actually got the AUV, we went to run some tests, and I found that the students didn't even have the software installed on computers yet. What usually takes probably years to learn, and we're gonna try to figure out how to do it in days. So that's kind of where we are. We're stuck because of the complexity of the programming on how to control the AUV. 
what I see happening is the moose or the uh, AUV is overriding our program. Changing the program is not gonna change the behavior because something's overriding our program. Okay, we can try that right now. Um, no, 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 look it up first. Don't okay, just okay. Uh, don't All just right. change it. Okay. Back in the water. I'm beginning to love it. At least that's what I tell myself. I'll love it even more if we get this thing working. When is your flight tomorrow, guys? 9:30 a.m. So we got. We've got uh, 18 hours, <laughs> if we don't sleep. I'm really tired and <laughs> I won't go home, but at the same time, I really wanted to get the six hour test done. Yeah. I, and if we, if we could, I definitely want to keep working, but we can't do that because um, we actually have to get to the small EV on a flight there today. And Mr. Kim has to get on that flight sooner than six hours from now, for sure. And hopefully when we get to Florida and then we run the six hour test there, Riptide is going to give us some pointers because they made the thing. Our goal for today was to get a six hour test done. We did literally the opposite of that in that I think we set ourselves back six hours worth of progress. Everybody's getting silly from low blood sugar. <laughs> we gotta get some food in these kids. We literally have no prep time, so tomorrow is the uh, is the start, 9 a.m. Uh, and the kids just got in at 8 p.m. right now, so we're gonna actually start working and getting the AUVs ready and prepped. It's gonna be a long night. All right, come on in, guys. Because it should tell you what's why happening. Shutting off. Right. This is this is the diagram of the path. All it's doing is sending out individual pigs, and it expects a return. We are meeting at X Prize folks at 9 a.m. tomorrow. That's when the competition actually starts, when the evaluation starts. The goal is either we come elated because we found the aha moment. Three, two, one to test connection. Or we're gonna come very confused. Without figuring out why the device is cutting off in the pool, if that happens in the open water, then we're gonna lose our AUV. So uh, we're hoping for some revelation. I'm exhausted, but you know, even with the pull test, when we when we couldn't get it working, the the thing that uh, impressed me the most was the the kids, and how uh, engaged and uh, and uh, excited and uh, dedicated they were. Oh shit! Sure. Dude, our room is flooding. Our room is flooding. Our room is completely flooding. Like, we tried to flush the bathroom, and the water's just pouring out. It's flooding everywhere. The water's flooding everywhere. It's flooding. It like went up. We need help. All our stuff's gonna be. <laughs> what? Okay. Just call downstairs oh, and maintenance. <laughs> Run! Did I just say I was so proud of our kids? <laughs> Bathroom and he flushed, and then they just showed up. Oh, shh, shh. Can you shut up? Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I fall my 
dollar jacket. <laughs> oh, my jacket. It's a two hundred dollar jacket. <laughs> I was so scary. I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. And like everything got soaked. And I mean, uh, uh, we're supposed to go in water for this competition, but that's not the water we expected. Your boys have a problem. Yeah. Up there. I don't know what they did to the toilets. Um, I don't think they did anything out of the ordinary. This is an interesting experience. It's never happened before. It's almost fun, but I mean, our room is flooded now. <laughs> You boys need to sit down and finish the uh, documentation. Boy, uh, Murphy's Law <laughs> couldn't happen at a worse time. Like those, those three boys are actually critical to getting all our documentation done. Well, we gotta do what we gotta do. But now, not just nature and weather and air and AVs, but the toilets are acting up on us. <laughs> Good night, guys. Good night, Mr. Kim. Angela slept early, but the rest of us slept at like 5.30 or 6. What about Jonah? Well, Jonah was asleep at like I don't know where Jonah is. He's somewhere. <laughs> I'm still half asleep. You just can't see. I'm still sleeping right now. What? You're killing me, Keith. You said to wait for him to load. Let's get all the We're headed over to the FAU SeaTac campus. So it's their kind of graduate level campus. Uh, they do uh, marine research and marine robotics. Hey! Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for making out. Well, we're from X Prize and we're here to observe today and we're just checking and see that, you know, things are running smoothly and then we'll report back to the judges. Well, right now we're preparing two things, the AUV for the test out there and also the PowerPoint for tomorrow we're going to show the judges. So that's kind of hectic right now. Ready? All aboard! Are we at the spot? Yeah. Okay. This is just test number one. Today we're testing two AUVs our micro AUV, and a second bigger AUV equipped with sonar to complete the mapping requirement. Our uh, bigger AUV with the sonar, we got it out to sea and had a couple of uh, above surface uh, test runs, but the battery depleted much faster than we imagined. And uh, by the time we wanted to do an underwater test, the battery was below 50%. There wasn't enough speed to even get it under the water. So. We had, uh, we had one or two runs and then that was it. So we're actually trying to take parts from the big AUV to replace the faulty parts we think are, are, are faulty in the little AUV, micro AUV. See if we can jumpstart the micro AUV and get it going. It's literally akin to trying to do open our surgery in the middle of the ocean. Right now, I can't see the end in sight. Did it power? Yep. He's breathing. It powered on. <laughs> that is crazy. All right, can you give us an extra point for that? <laughs> There's gotta be, is there criteria number 12, do the impossible? <laughs> We 
just got the AUV to start and now we're gonna try to connect to it. Wait, for some reason I'm not able to putty in. Yeah, it says connection timed out. There's a network so error. The I'm feeling tired because I didn't have much sleep and it's been a long day in the sun. This has not been easy either. The dorsal fin was not connected to its motor shaft anymore, so we had to fix that. And then we tried shorting the circuit together, bypassing the switch in order to turn it back on, but that wouldn't work, so now neither unit can power on. We now have both units not powering on. There's really not much we can do. So I think uh, we're gonna have to wrap up and head back in and then try to resolve these issues on the ground, see if we can figure out what's going on. All right, guys, let's pack it up. Let's go. Yep. You know, what they're encountering right now is trying to work on the moving deck of a ship in the heat and the sun and the diesel fumes. It's just not optimal conditions to try to repair fine electronics. I think they're making a good decision to go back to shore to try to solve the problem. Our representative from Riptide, Dean, he said he'd never seen so many things go wrong on a single trip. We'll be doing a lot of sleeping, working, praying. Both of the AUVs are bricks, and we have no sonar data. Really? Yes, really. So what are we gonna do? This is like the end of the competition. So sorry, Arnold. It's fine. Maybe tomorrow, it's Mike. Tomorrow all night, or dude. That means, dude, <laughs> all of your mental preparation is gone down. Hey guys. Yeah, I, I should not treat homework today. <laughs> I know. I told you. I told you this was gonna be the first time. I told you. Thank you. take on huge challenges, one of the things students discover is that failure is a part of learning. And if they keep the attitude not to give up, then that just becomes really an accelerated learning opportunity. God's word tells us that the Lord stirs up the seas and the waves. Yesterday was a terrible day because everything failed. And sometimes I think success depends on why are we doing it. So let's pray and ask the creator of the heavens and the earth to give you divine downloads so that your success today can be as huge as your failures were yesterday. It's in your name we pray, amen. Thank you. We're doing our six hour duration test here in the water tank, while at the same time in parallel, we're actually getting the WAMV set up so we can do our automation and navigation for the above service vehicle. How are you? Good, how are you doing? While the rest of the team is setting up the harness for the, the micro AUV in the wave tank, uh, we're going to be setting up the larger AUV over here for the WAMV because we're going to do test deployment. I think all of the issues from yesterday for, are for the most part resolved. It was just a minor setback, I think. I mean, that's what I like to think, but. I'm ready for a run at 5%. And is this the full six hour It program? should be, yep. Okay. Three, two, one, go. We are logging the files from the six hour test. Everything seems to be working fine. Uh, we're also gonna try to put some weights on the AUV so that we can have uh, more propeller efficiency underwater. The infrared penetrates through all of that. Right? So then you can, you know, be able to detect objects even if the link and I can't see it. So that's all stuff you all went through. I'm taller than you. So th is that all you heard after I told you all this? You're taller than me? <laughs> Our unique selling point is actually the Mothership and AUV combination. So we, we got our Riptide AUV connected to the uh, WAMV. The FAU folks uh, developed a custom hoist that will grab the uh, AUV, take it out to the competition area, and actually release it. All we need to do is just show a straight navigation and deployment. 
the and then via remote control do the uh, do the uh, yeah. turn. Yesterday, the, the WAMV drove into a branch. I've been at SeaTech for four years, and this is the first time that any of the WAMVs have ever crashed into a branch and damaged a prop like this. Yay! The world's first riptide deployment from a WAMV device, right? That is that is. <laughs> right now we have the Wham V running autonomously. Don't hit me! Don't hit me! Okay, and now we can see that the vehicle has avoided me. Oh! Hey! Still going! Still going! Still going! Okay. Hey! It stopped! 23! We passed the endurance test. Our AV ran autonomously underwater for six hours. Well, he says we get two requirements done out of this. Uh, a six hour run and seaworthiness. We get seaworthiness. What? I'm he kind of doesn't get excited? I'm not excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Hey, hey. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's good. We're excited, okay? I'm not excited. What do you say? I'm not excited. We're excited. No, I, I, I don't know on paper I'm excited. how many what requirements exactly? we met. I think we're at 10 out of 11. Okay. No way. All right. I'm excited now. I'm excited on the inside. Oh, wow. yeah, I'm excited on the outside. Wait, Yesterday, we, we, we thought uh, we weren't going to meet even half the requirements. We are very, very far ahead than where we were yesterday. Wait, really? She came assigning it. She came assigning. She came assigning. Sign, 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 sign. We just signed off on 8 of the 11. The 9th? is the 2,000 meter uh, documentation, which we have till January 31st to do. 10th and 11th is mapping and data ritual. They're both on you. Um, uh, we have, starting now, we have 24 hours to, to produce that if we can. Otherwise, we fail those two criteria. Beautiful. Okay. After our sonar retrieves the data, then our data will be converted into an image and those will get us our points because the judges are looking for an image of the mapped area. The problem is that we, um, our sonar is actually completely broken, so we can't retrieve the data from the sonar. So we contacted Riptide and they gave us data which uh, from one week ago when they tested it in Florida Keys. Oh, guys, did, uh, did Dean tell you? He said that uh, the beagle bone inside has all the kind sonar data on it. So, oh, the, the memory card? Yeah, so we're, we just need to connect via USB or Ethernet and we can get all the data off. Yeah, yeah. Many gigabytes of data. Like many, many, many fi files Where of data. From the photo just last week. So, so. Uh, I just wanted to show you, this is the... Uh, Timestamp too. Right. This is the climb data. Yep. Uh, this is all the STF files. It's time all timestamped mm -hmm. November 16th, which is when they ran it yeah, yeah. for the keys. Yeah, so it's, uh, it was not on the climb, it's on your data? Yeah. Okay, so that's good to know, right? Um, right now, we're all really, really excited because we got the sonar data off of the beagle bone from Florida Keys. That means we have data retrieval, which is one of the criteria, which means we can get 10 out of the 11 for sure. Um, and then we have to make sure that we can convert the files. So that's the beginning of a new night of work, but it's the end of a new... We got something done, so I'm really, really excited. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this signing I can do. Terrific job today. Um, you know, we're, we're all pretty impressed with you guys. So, uh, it's, wow. it's Arnav's hour because it's his team now that's going to have to convert all this yeah. data. But um, the fact that we were able to retrieve all the data from the sonar itself is a really big deal. And now if we're able to make the map, that's an even larger deal. Hello. There are two criteria for the Esri. One is data retrieval, which is basically we have our sonar right on our AUV, and we have to go extract data, uh, so we can go put it into Esri and create a map. So right now, what we're trying to do is we need to get positive buoyancy on our AUV. I swear, if this works. <laughs> Beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. 
no more PVC Somebody pipes. Take a picture it wasn't buoyant in this side of the water. This is uh, fresh water, so it would have sunk. So we didn't know where to go from there. So she had the idea of zip tying sandals to it to make it um, buoyant, and that was a ridiculous idea. But now it works, and so we actually used it. I've never seen anybody zip tie flip flops onto the vehicle. The six hour test was just going straight. We want to be able to go to this heading and this heading and this heading. We want to be able to get that software to work. So, that, so we're going to do that today and also tomorrow in a lake nearby. So we got uh, actually a major part of it done today, which I had, I had no expectation of doing, which is awesome. What we've been talking about for two days has actually happened. The kids are succeeding at, at this software issue and they're learning how to operate the software because they've had time to play with it. The competition is actually about mapping the ocean floors. We got all the data, but if we can't produce a map, uh, we're kind of in trouble. So I think this is, uh, this is the highest requirement, or the most important of the 11. We really need to hit this. We have been working for the last two or three hours after Mr. Kim got the sonar data off the sonar. We were trying to go and convert those SDF files into files we need, but we realized that there are no online converters. So it just, it just really like frustrating because we can't do anything about it, no matter how much we go and try to check. So, I mean, now the most we can do is go email Klein and to see if they have any solutions. I didn't think it'd be, it would be this hard. I thought there were just a couple of simple steps and we would get what we needed, but apparently not. So I emailed to Riptide tonight to see if uh, they can get us access to that software. Hopefully they'll get the email and we can get it tomorrow morning. Good night, Mr. Kim. Good night. We haven't really made any progress either. It's not like you or anyone even else has really made any like, significant progress on this. The last three hours we've been working. So I there's have. no reason to really get angry over this and we should all calm down. Okay. And don't really get mad because getting mad won't really, uh, really help you at this point, okay? And you being like this, especially right now, won't really get us anywhere either. So just chill out. Okay, okay. There's nothing great. I'm, I'm, I'm off. Do that. Okay, calm. sorry again. Do that. Okay, sorry. Okay. You want to see, Jonah? Oh, Give me the first to see it. How many things they are? 145. Oh my goodness. Check this out. Whoa. Both Riptide and Client Software sent us the download for their software. I'm going to play it. This is our sonar data. Now it's up to the judges to determine whether that demonstration that they were able to provide is enough for them to move on, but just to, to have gotten all that done is, 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 is impressive work by those young people. Yeah, so we're gonna take this boat out. We're gonna launch the AUV and start the square pattern that we fixed yesterday. So we're gonna put it out in the water. We're gonna go out and retrieve it as well. So each of us gets one side of this. Here, let me. Let me uh, yes. And so we have to lean together. I know. And so we have to go all the way down. We can't just drop it. Okay, I know. There you go. Deeper Ansel, than this. You're gonna have to get in like I am. Like I am in as much as I can be. Oh, it's not floating. Oh, 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 shoot. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. I see it. It turned. I did see that. Oh, yes! Came back up. Okay. Oh, I mean, like, it's doing whatever it's... Okay. Oh. I mean, it's not sinking. It's just unbalanced. Uh, do you just get any part of it? Oh, oh, it's going Did under the boat. Under the boat. Did anyone know? That's just. We may have just lost our AUV.
it's it's down. If we've made a mistake in ballasting, yeah, we're going to have to search for it with nets or something. We may get lucky and have it come back up, but if it, if it went down, it's likely going to stay down. Can't find the AUV, right? The team can't find the AUV. And, you know, XPRIZE really can't get involved, so we just have to watch, unfortunately. Um, but it sounds like it possibly was ballasted incorrectly. I don't know if it's because this is maybe estuarine, so like a little bit fresher, so it's the vehicle might have been a little top, you know, heavy in one end. I was the one in charge of running the AUV, and uh, it didn't work out. And not just the program didn't work out, but we lost the AUV, which is definitely a, a big, uh, big downfall for us. They lost that? Yeah, they can't. They can't uh, you know, just put the bags in the bag. Yeah, it, it, it is ran the, the pull test one. Um, and it, yeah, it's not, it, like, I don't know if they missed, missed something in the code or whatnot, but it's, yeah, it, did, it, went, it went down and didn't resurface. They're looking for it now. Um, still driving around looking for it. It's pretty. Contain, semi-contained area, but we don't know if, I mean, if it just has this motor running and it's diving, then it's going to stay down there. This was a really bad idea. Uh, it was frustrating. I mean, we, we didn't need to do this extra stuff. Uh, so we, we put our chances at risk. Um, but what can we do? Uh, we got to finish it up. Father, Lord, you know where our AUV is, exactly where it is, Lord, and, and Lord, we just ask you for your guidance and your wisdom to help find, locate this AUV, and just, we realize that we, this, this might be beyond our own efforts, Lord, but, uh, but you're in control. It's depressing. You never like to lose those. The scary part is you're never sure whether you can get them back or not. Lessons we learned today. Okay. We need to have a checklist. So we let go of it. We need to have a checklist before putting AUV in the water, like things like neutral buoyancy, strobe lights on, um, anything else we can think of. So let's get the router and stuff out. nature of this this whole competition is <laughs> you know we 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 wanted to make drama right <laughs> so this is awesome um, we go from absolute loss to, to total win so <laughs> yeah we'll fun with it oh man With faith, hard work, and determination, great things happen beyond our imagination. That is what we've seen in the last few days. Out of this, we've already succeeded. We have kids who have now gone through a phenomenal ex learning experience, not just to be oceanographers, but to be explorers in any realm. Before the XPRIZE competition, I didn't really think of the ocean that much, but now I know every single time I look at the ocean, I'm gonna see more. I've learned so much. I mean, I came in making stickers, and now I'm working with Esri, I'm learning about moose. I'm making an actual contribution to the team. 
it's really pushed my love for the ocean. It's an amazing place and I really think that we need to make an effort to explore it and see what's down there. The competition has given me a new appreciation for the ocean. The ocean has a lot of things that it can offer and it could really help in the future of our society. We're doing this because we love it and we have a passion for it. Being in this program has shaped what I want to do in the future. I'm really interested in ocean science. We can come up with new discoveries and even one day be able to like, find something like really unique and crazy, like even Atlantis. The sky is no longer the limit and the oceans now are no longer the limit. Who knows what's next? We'll, we'll, we'll have to see where God takes us. Whether it's battery chemistry or robotics or, or whatever the, the subject they've chosen, these are the people that are gonna take my place. They're gonna replace us, the current crop of engineers and scientists. Please join me in welcoming the X-Prize team members.